Hello. Hello. You're watching Matt Becker, Weed Master. This is Siberian Squill. It's from the same family as asparagus. It's an early spring bloomer. And uh, yeah, it's from central Eurasia, like the Caucasus region. Next to the Siberian Squill, we have snow drops, which have these droopy white petals with a little green chin. Uh, they're like uh, uh, from the bulbs family, like onions, and they're cool too. All right, y'all know who this is. This is this is a daffodil from the Narcissus genus of the Amaryllis family, native to the Mediterranean. Uh, it's a yellow flower that arrives in early spring, and once again, it's a daffodil. We've got the hairy bittercrest. It's a, a small white flower with four petals and these sort of reddish stalks. Uh, and this kind of weird lobey leafy things and it's native to your Europe and it's from the mustard family We have greater periwinkle from the dogbane family It is a ground cover plant that has a periwinkle flower with five petals native to the Mediterranean regions the greater periwinkle This one is henbit dead nettle while this one is red dead nettle both have these little purple hooded flowers both are from the mint family a little musty odor and native to Europe and Asia. Dead nettle. We have the common blue violet. Uh, this is in its white petaled form. It's native to the eastern United States and it's the state flower of Rhode Island. The common blue violet. I just want to point out that all these weeds are growing right off the side of the road here in this one patch. Not only do we have the dead nettles but we've got dandelions and we've even got freaking chives growing over here. So, it's pretty cool. Here is the forget-me-not. And it's got five petals and they're mostly blue. And it's got little leaves that are fuzzy. They look like mouse ears from which it gets its genus name, Myosotis. The forget -me -not. This is the common grape hyacinth from the Asparagaceae family. Native to the Mediterranean region, but naturalized in North America. It looks like a cluster of grapes, the grape hyacinth. Common Whitlow grass from the mustard family. Uh, its defining feature is it's got these four white petals that are deeply notched, so it almost looks like eight petals. And it's from all over. From the coffee family, native to the eastern United States, they have four bluish petals with a yellow center. Uh, and they show up in spring. Bluets from the mustard family, native to much of the old world continents. It's got a cluster of white flowers with four petals and these leaves that when crushed up kind of smell like garlic. Garlic mustard. This is Black Medic from the pea family. Uh, it's from all over the world, native to the old world, but it's got this flower head with tiny yellow flowers and it's known to fix nitrogen. It's also related to alfalfa. There are many types of dandelions. This is your, your common dandelion from the Astern family. Shows up in spring, characteristic by its sort of is shaped leaves. Uh, when it's done with its yellow flower, it goes to seed. This is called Heart's Ease uh, from the pansy family. It's a wild pansy from Europe. Uh, it's characteristic by its a three colors. It's got purple and yellow and white, and it's Heart's Ease. This tiny blue flower is, is corn speedwell um, from Africa, Europe, and Asia. It grows low to the ground. It's got a tiny blue flower with four petals, and it's from the plantain family, corn speedwell. Dwarf sink foil from the rose family, native to North America. It's got a yellow flower with five petals, and then its leaves are also like five leaves, and they're very spiky. And that's your dwarf sink foil. Here is a very well-developed ribwort plantain from the plantain family. It's kind of a dinky flower with these long whitish stalks, uh, but we love it all the same. Ribwort plantain. Now this is a pretty fun flower. It's called yellow rocket from the mustard family. It's got these bunches of yellow flowers with four petals and uh, these spiky leaves on this big long stalk. And it's yellow rocket. Little guy is the lily of the valley from from the asparagus family. It's got these little bell-shaped flowers with little curls, and they're white, native to uh, Europe and Asia. This is highly poisonous. Do not eat. 
weeks ago there were dandelions, there were there were hinbit, dead nettles, there were chives, there were all sorts of different flowers, and now they've mowed all of it. It is all gone. That's Urban Wild of flowers, a wood sorrel. It's a yellow wood sorrel. It's got its leaves kind of look like clover. Um like with three little notches there, but it's got this little yellow flower. Now on the other hand, we got red sorrel over here. This is red sorrel. It's kind of a grass-like plant. Tiny red flowers. From a distance, it looks very reddish. Um, apparently blueberry farmers hate it, and it's red sorrel. This is the annual fleabane from the aster family, native to North America. It's a long stem daisy that's slightly fuzzy and has slightly lavender flowers, and it does well in disturbed environments. Annual fleabane. Hey y'all, this is my favorite weed. This is pineapple weed from the aster family, native to North America and Northeast Asia. It's uh, this little tiny thing with this little clumpy flower. When you crush it up, it smells like pineapple, pineapple weed. This is called the nap at noon, or the 11 o'clock lady, or the garden star of Bethlehem. Uh, from Western Europe, Northern Africa, and introduced into the United States. It's from the asparagus family. It's a white flower with six petals. Nap it right here we have the shepherd's purse from the mustard family, native to Europe and Africa, but found all over. And it's got these little alternating triangular leaves and a head full of white. It's a shepherd's purse. Some creeping buttercups here from the, bu the buttercup family, also known as ranunculus, or little frog. Uh, they're found all over Rhode Island. They're these tall little yellow flowers um, that look like this. Creeping buttercup. This is the Multiflora Rose fr from the Rose family, native to Asia. It's got five white petals, and it's kind of pokey, and it's a noxious weed, and we call it the Multiflora Rose. Here we have a raspberry plant, uh, Rubus, it's a genus, from the Rose family. It could be any type of raspberry. It's a brambly flower with five white petals. It's a raspberry of sorts. Here we have blue-eyed grass from the iris family native to the New World. It's a six-petaled purplish flower with a yellow center and it grows like grass. And it's called blue-eyed grass. Here we have the bird's foot trefoil uh, from the bean family or peas, which means what? Yes, it fixes nitrogen. It's got this yellow little weird looking flower and it's a bird's foot trefoil. And damn, bro, look at all these clovers. They're also called trefoils, and they're from the legume family, which, yes, of course, fix nitrogen. Uh, clovers are easy. You guys all know clovers. These are clovers. All right, these ones here are called cat's ears uh, from the aster family. They look a lot like hawkweed or dandelions. The main thing is that they have these really long stems. You can see them growing really tall up there. It's a cat's ear. So here we have the crown vetch from the legume family. Looks very similar to the bird's foot trefoil, except it's pinkish colors. Uh, and it's got these long alternating leaf uh, things here. Crown vetch. And look, here we have the tufted vetch, also from the legume family. Looks also similar, but it's got these longer, deeply purple flowers. And its leaves are a little bit more slender. Tufted vet. And this flower is the white campion from the carnation family, native to the old world. Uh, it's got this kind of slotted white petaled flower with this bulbous little holder. It's a white campion. Wow, would you look at that? We got the woody nightshade from the potato family. It's a vine growing plant uh, with these purple flowers, of five petals, and a yellow center. It's also called the bittersweet. And it's a woody nightshade. This grass is called orchard grass, also known as coxfoot. You can see the flowers extend in an alternating pattern up the stalk, and it's got these long, slender blades, orchard grass. And this shrubby plant here is called mountain yanny. Uh, it's native to the eastern United States. It kind of has a white uh, to pink pentagram-shaped flower that grows in these little bunches, mountain yanny. Well, would you look at this? We got some wild blueberries here from the Heather family. Uh, normally they have these little white bell-shaped flowers, but we can see the fruits are already starting to develop and eventually they'll turn indigo blue. Blueberries. This right here is Virginia creeper. 
and you can tell because it's a leaf five leaves with a serrated edge and it grows in these big old mats Virginia creeper so here we have the yellow iris a droopy yellow iris So this flower here is the common yarrow from the aster family. You can identify it by what this, this structure is called an umbel. It has a bunch of white flowers and three leaves. And that, my friends, is the common yarrow. All right, this is taking me months to figure out, but I think I got it. This is called red sandsbury from the carnation family, Spergillaria rubra. It's a prostrate growing plant with pink flowers with five petals. Red sandsbury. All right, quick PSA about poison ivy, toxic and dendron radicans from the eastern United States, uh, from the cashew family. It grows in leaves of three. So if you see three leaves of any size, just leave it be. All right, this one's real cool. It's called World Loose Strife uh, from the primrose family. It grows on these long stalks, and then it has these branches, four leaves, and for each leaf, there is one five-petaled yellow flower. That's World Leaf, Loof Strife. Right, here we have the beach rose from the rose family, native to Asia. It's a shrubby plant with these big pink rosy flowers, and in fact they're edible. It's a beach rose. This is curly dock from the knotweed family. It's got these long uh, stems with these green seed pods that will turn brown at the end of the summer, and then it's got these kind of wrinkled long slender leaves, and that's curly dock. All right, this guy here is called broadleaf plantain from the plantain family. You may remember English plantain, which has this long stalk and slender leaves. There's broadleaf plantain has a long floret and broad leaves. Broadleaf plantain. This is the Asiatic dayflower from the dayflower family, native to East Asia. It is a ground-growing plant that prefers disturbed wet environments and has two blue petals and a white chin and little yellow stamen. That's a dayflower. This is a Deptford pink from the pink or carnation family, native to Europe. It's a five-petaled, brightly pink flower that grows in these little stalks and has long, slender leaves. And that, my friends, is the Deptford pink. This is St. John's wort from the St. John's wort family, native to Europe and Asia. It is a yellow flower with five petals, with tiny black dots, and a lot of these little stamens. And that's a St. John's wort. All right, we got mugwort over here. This is mugwort from the Aster family. It's a tall growing herbaceous plant and it starts out really complicated at the bottom but gets simpler as you go up. And it's got a very thick tap root so it's hard to get rid of. That's mugwort. A recent bloom in the park is the Canadian hawkweed from the Aster family native to the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's got these branches of yellow flowers and it's a tall stem and it's got this toothed leave and that is how you tell a hawkweed. Oh, would you look at that? We found the spotted wintergreen from the heather family native to eastern North America. It's got a downward facing flower with five white petals and it's got these dark veined leaves. It's pretty rare and it's the spotted wintergreen. This is chicory from the aster family. It's a periwinkle blue aster like dandelion looking thing though sometimes it's pink and it's quite beautiful and I like it a lot and we call it chicory. Oftentimes when you're walking along a trail, you'll come across this grassy looking plant called a path rush. It's not actually a grass, it's from the rush family and does well in this compacted soil. And it's got these little circular seed heads and that's the path rush. So this little flower here is called the shaggy soldier. It's from the daisy slash aster family and it's native to Mexico. It's mostly defined by having tiny white petals and a big yellow center. And that is the Shaggy Soldier. Here we have the Wild Carrot from the Carrot family. It's got this umbel shape with white flowers. And you can differentiate it from, say, a yarrow by its single red flower right in the center. That's the Wild Carrot. Here we have the Button Bush from the Coffee family. Native to the eastern United States, you can identify it from this ball of white flowers with long stamens. And that's the Button Bush and grows in wetlands. This is purple loosestrife from the loosestrife family. It has this stalk of purplish flowers and it grows by the water's edge. Now some people are like, oh mad, it's an invasive. I don't want it growing here. It's like, well, this isn't a real place. This is a... Here we have the spotted spurge from the Euphorbia family. 
native to North America, you can identify it by seeing it's a mat growing plant and has a little dark spot on each leaf. And you can often find it in places like sidewalk cracks. Spotted spur. This little flower here is called Lady's Thumb. It's from the buckwheat family. And you can see it growing near the ground and it's got these stalks of tiny pink flowers. And that is the Lady's Thumb. This is our swamp milkweed. Uh, it's from the dogbane family. It differs from your more common milkweeds, and there's many, but this has more slender leaves and these pinkish umbels of flowers. Swamp milk. Here we have the spotted knapweed from the aster family, native to Eastern Europe. It's got these minty green stalks with lots of thin, slender leaves, and the flowers are kind of purplish pink and they're very spindly and long, and that's the spotted knapweed. This is the yellow toad flax from the plantain family. Native to the Eurasian continent, it has a light yellow snapdragon flower with a dark orange center and these spindly light green leaves. And that's the yellow toad flax. This is your common mullein from the figwort family. It's not native, but it's naturalized pretty much throughout the continent of North America. It's got these stalks that have these yellow flowers and these soft leaves. And it's a weed for sure, common mullein. Hmm, what are these pretty white flowers? Well, it turns out it's garlic chives. If you allow it to flower, it gets these florets with six petaled white flowers on it. And if you taste it, it tastes like garlic. Frickin' garlic chives. Rod from the Aster family, native to North America. It has these long stems that have these little tiny yellow florets, and it blooms late in the summer. I just can't get enough of this goldenrod. Burnweed is a native aster that kind of looks like a prickly lettuce. It's got these jagged leaves that give way to these flowers that are yellow and then give off these white little seed heads. And it typically does well in recently burned areas. American burnweed. So here's the cattail. It's a native plant that always grows in wetlands. And what can I tell you? It's the corn dog plant. It looks like a corn dog. And when it goes to seed, it makes this fluffy stuff. And that's the cattail. This is orange jewelweed. It's native to North America. It's got this orange trumpet-like flower and these big thick stalks that the sap of which can help cure poison ivy. It's also called the spotted touch-me-not because of its explosive seed pods. The orange jewelweed. Pansy from the aster family and native to Europe. It's got these very lobey leaves and these little button-shaped flowers and it has all sorts of medicinal uses. That's a tansy. Oriental bittersweet from East Asia. It's got a woody stem and then grows these yellow berries that when they break open will be bright red. Uh, this is a toxic plant, so do not eat it. Pigweed, it's from the amaranth family. It grows in these long stalks that turn in the fall. And it kind of has these silvery leaves and these tiny little nugget looking flowers. Bradbury's bee balm, or eastern bee balm, is from the mint family, and it's native. It's got these pink, weird-looking petals on this big old ball, and it kind of smells like oregano. Um, and that's Bradbury's bee balm. This is horseweed from the aster family, native to North America. It's got these slender leaves that grow up a long stalk that can grow up over, over six feet, and it has these tiny little flowers that almost immediately go to seed. And it's a very hardy weed. It's horseweed. This is Pearly Everlasting from the Aster family. It's got these narrow soft leaves and these clusters of papery white flowers at the top. And it is a host plant for the American Painted Lady Butterfly. It is called Black Nightshade. Uh, it's got a flower with five white petals and a yellow center. And it's named for these black berries that it produces. It's Black Nightshade. This is the evening primrose from the willow herb family, native to North America. It's a tall growing plant with these leaves that spiral up the stalk, and then it has this solid yellow flower with four lobes, and it gets reddish at the bottom. Evening primrose. Yellow nut sedge from the sedge family, native to the old world, but found all over. It's got these long grass-like leaves and then these spiky flowers, and historically it was cultivated for its tubers, which are called earth almonds. And that's the yellow nut sedge. Blackberry is from the rose family, and it starts out with a white flower that turns into these red fruits that then turns into these black fruits, which you can eat. These things grow like crazy, so watch out. That's the blackberry. Tick clover from the Desmodium genus and from the bean family. You can recognize it because it has these 
characteristic pea-shaped flowers. Uh, and they grow in these bunches with these little radial leaves. Tick clover. We have Virginia pepperweed from the mustard family, native to North America. It's characteristic by these stalks with these little seedy things on the end, circular seed things, and they taste like pepper. Uh, Virginia pepperweed. This is slender false foxglove, native to the United States, found rare here in Rhode Island. It's got these four pink petals and these slender green leaves, and its roots are actually parasitic and will draw nutrients from other plants. Slender false foxglove. Wild hops from the cannabis family, native to East Asia. It's got these sticky vines that grow these seven lobed leaves and then it produces these traditional hop-like flowers. But you really can't do much with these. Nevertheless, wild hops. Here we have Euphorbia bayonensis from the Spurge family, native to Kenya. It's a cactus looking plant that grows real long uh, and lots of spikes. And that's Euphorbia bayonensis. This is the white wood aster. It's native to eastern North America and it prefers these sort of wooded environments and it blooms these very slender white petals late in summer and early in fall. White wood aster. This is carpet weed native to the New World. It is a mat growing plant with these whorls of slender leaves and then has these flowers with five white petals and you can find it in really disturbed and gravelly soils. Carpet weed this weird flower. It's called a hopness or potato bean. It's native to the eastern United States and it's got these clusters of hooded purple pink flowers and it's actually growing in a vine. It's a, this is the vine here. That's the hopness. Kale, smartweed. It's from the buckwheat family. It looks a lot like lady's thumb but it grows a lot bigger, has longer florets, and sometimes they can be sort of palish white in color. And that's the pale smartweed. Ah yes, blue vervain from the vervain family, native to North America. It grows these long stalks that produce these very simple, five-petaled, small blue-purple flowers. And this plant is drought resistant. It's blue vervain. And he's knotweed from the buckwheat family, native to East Asia. It grows these giant bushes that can grow up as much as four inches a day with these big leaves and these small white flowers. And that's the Japanese knotweed. Pokeweed from North America. This plant starts off with green berries that later develop into these purple berries. Now this plant is toxic to humans in almost every way, but is essential for migrating birds as a food supply who are not affected by the poison. Pokeweed. So within this moist ditch we have found one species of the cardinal flower from the bellflower family native to North America. It's identifiable by these long scarlet petals and yes occurs only in wet soils and that's the cardinal flower. White snake root is another native aster that you'll find blooming in the fall. You can identify it by these clusters of white flowers uh, with these long stamens. And if your cows eat it and you drink the milk, you could get milk sickness because it is toxic. Rabbit tobacco. It's native to the eastern United States and it's from the aster family. It has these long stalks with slender leaves and these little clusters of flowers that will become creamy once they bloom. And if you crush it up, it kind of smells sweet like maple syrup. So some of the last things you'll see in bloom this season are the asters. Uh, trouble is, there's a lot of different kinds of asters, and they range from white to purple, and can be hard to identify. But nevertheless, there they are. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the sweet pepper bush from the Clethra family, native to eastern North America. It's got these stalks of sweet-smelling white flowers, and it gets its name from the peppercorn-like seeds that it leaves behind. Sweet pepper bush!